Hello everyone, I am Tassa, and today we got a very big update for Gems of War. Of course, today's technically the first day of version 6.0, even though we've been in it for like a week or two now. Uh, this is the first time where all the features have basically been implemented. Uh, most notably, of course, we got the addition of the Nexus uh, Kingdom and everything that that brings. The new Kingdom Pass system, which uh, isn't as bad, but could still be better. And, of course, the new Journey game mode. And uh, we're going to be going over absolutely everything. Uh, we'll start kind of from the top and go in a somewhat normal-ish order just to kind of keep things in sync as far as uh, everything. So, first things first, as far as the uh, Glory Troop men, uh, do not bother getting anything else that you see here. Just worry about the Glory Troop. <laughs> as far as the Glory Troop, you could probably even skip on it. The uh, main reason for this is the Event Key Drop Table you probably want to uh, focus on instead. Uh, however, as far as this troop, it ends up dealing some damage to an enemy and then entangles them. And if the enemy dies, it ends up creating two elemental stars. So what elemental stars do, there are, of course, a new gem. They will be available for the next 35 days during the Kingdom Pass. Basically, what they are is they count as almost like a wild card. They count as uh, red, blue, brown, and green. So every color except the two light colors, the yellow and uh, purple. So everything, single one except those two. And basically, they will give one to all four of those colors when matched. They count as all four of those colors, uh, so they can match with uh, any of those. Four, brown, red, uh, blue, or green. And they also destroy an X. So kind of like Dragonian Monk, where it does an X destroy. Whenever that gem is destroyed, it will also end up destroying an X, meaning that you get all the mana for it. So this is kind of like a forest um, a wolf, uh, or dire wolf, I mean. But uh, just with a few different uh, gimmicks. And um, with a conditional uh, gain next turn, where it ends up doing it based on if the enemy ends up dying. So overall, it can have some potential. Uh, a little bit more limited compared to auto extra turn, but uh, it's definitely among one of the better wolves as far as the wolf category of uh, troop. However, as I mentioned, you might want to end up getting this in the event key drop table. I guess we'll waste some uh, gem key, or not gem keys, but event keys right now just to kind of show. Of course, we did it on stream earlier. Big stream of that. However, this will show us basically all the drops. There are currently only five. The Nexus Portal, the Shale, or Shally. I still have not determined which way is the correct way. Shaley? There's a lot of fun ways you could say that. But uh, let's go with Shaley. But anyways, uh, you also get it for free, one copy from completing out the quest line. Uh, the Nature Born Wolf, which is the one you can get for glory, of course. Uh, the Fireborn Warrior, and the main one that you're going to be needing, the Nature Born uh, Warden. Uh, because this one you'll end up needing the most amount of copies for, since you need 191 copies of it, since it is a uh, common. And um, yeah, so this is the only five. Uh, keep in mind, there is a 0% chance to get a Mythic. I'm not sure if this thing actually shows it correctly. Um, it actually does. Uh, there is no Mythic here. They actually did it correctly. I guess after what happened with Weaver, they were like, <laughs> the weird, they were prepared. <laughs> they were super prepared. But yeah, there's, it doesn't show any mythic drop rate, which is correct. Uh, there is no mythic uh, currently in drop table. Uh, the mythic's not coming until the first Friday of uh, next month, which is also when the faction's coming out. Uh, this Friday being the new um, hero class. But anyways, so uh, those are the only five within the event key drop table. So don't try going for anything else as those are the only five you're ever going to be get and a 0% chance for Mythic, so do be wary of that. So, next order of business. Uh, let's do, I guess, the event. Of course, we do have Guild Wars going on this week. That's kind of on the back burner, given how many billion things, but if nothing else, remember to set all your defend teams and uh, make sure to actually do the battles at some point. <laughs> There's so many other things going on that uh, it's definitely not the highest priority, but at least make sure to set your defend teams, if nothing else. So, of course, uh, pretty big thing. We got ourselves a brand new game mode, the uh, Journeys. So uh, this was added in version 6.0, but of course this is the very first journey we've ever had. Instead of uh, having a ward event this week, it is now replaced with this new uh, journey event. So uh, the restriction here is elemental plus green, so we specifically have to use any greens that are elemental. Main noteworthy thing about this is you cannot use Mirage Queen, meaning you will not have a 50% mana start uh, for it. As far as the tiers are concerned, it's kind of similar to how raids and invasions were in the past. Um, you can end up getting it done for 500 uh, gems if everyone in your guild ends up doing this. Uh, basically, the strategy for 500 gems is this gives you the weapon. This gives you enough to legend a troop. You then use one blue orb on it, and then you have mythic to troop. It is pretty important to have this max, as it is a little bit like a bounty troop, and that has a ratio. Uh, do keep in mind, similar to bounty troops, it only can do one for a team. So no point in putting more than one of these onto your team. Just put one. Uh, and it'll end up giving you an additional multiplier for miles. It's basically required to use this thing, simply because of how many more miles 
that you're going to be getting for uh, doing so. So it's kind of like a bounty hunter captain, except uh, unlike bounty teams where you have to run four bounty troops, you only specifically have to one, run one of this because doing multiple will not stack. And then the rest of your team is just the actual team. So you can actually build like more like real teams compared to that of bounty hunter, which is kind of nice. As far as the game mode itself, you'll end up getting two or three paths. You're generally going to want to take the one that has more miles. However, you will occasionally see buffs next to them. Like for example, we've seen an HP buff twice, which ends up giving us additional HP, but sometimes you see like glory, which will give you obviously glory souls, gold, and other various uh, things um, that you can end up getting from them. But more often than not, you're going to do it based on miles. So there are a few things that determine how many miles you will get. The main one is whatever the mileage says above it. Uh, the second one, of course, is if you end up using the captain uh, for the uh, week, and this one, of course, being the uh, Hawthorne, which ends up giving up to a three times multiplier if you have it at mythic. Not quite sure what the intervals are in between, but ideally you'll just get it up to mythic. Oh, wait, never mind. Actually, it's kind of obvious. I was wondering because of um, compared to a common, but yeah, duh, it's an epic, so it technically only has three tiers, doesn't it? <laughs> epic, legendary, and mythic. I kind of forgot about that, but yeah, that's why it only has three numbers there. That would make sense. Never mind. <laughs> But I actually just realized that now. But uh, anyways, obviously you just generally want to get it to Mythic for the max bonus. But uh, there's, those are the three factors. The um, amount of miles above it, the um, using this or not, and how ascended it is. And there's a third factor. So there are things that within the battle that can reduce your score. Uh, there's really only two. Uh, one of them is if you are losing any troops. So if you end the battle, kind of like Guild Wars, where if you end the battle and you have not resummoned a troop, you will end up losing additional points. Uh, for every troop that has not been resummoned, you will end up losing two miles. Uh, the other thing that ends up losing your miles is you can lose up to 10 miles based on how many turns you take beyond 10. So every single time you end up taking your turn and it goes to the enemy turn and then returns back to your turn, ends up counting as one single turn. And if this happens 10 times, you will start to lose uh, miles. And if I'm not mistaken, the calculation is done before all your multipliers. So theoretically, you're losing three times as many because it's uh, prior to the uh, multiplier end up taking its uh, cut. So you can end up losing a okay amount of miles. You're generally going to be losing them not because of deaths necessarily, but more so because of turns taking too long. Uh, this can definitely be a little bit of an issue with bad starting boards, uh, especially since the only power we have for this event is Siren. And it's a little bit hard to try to get a Siren in there. Like Boke Strider and Siren are your, like your main two man accumulators. I don't, you know, like other things that can already do it, like Wild Queen. But as far as like the, your low mana cost ones that are going to do it, uh, Siren often power and bulk strider just because it's basically throughout <laughs> but green and tankier but uh you're generally going to need to switch to bulk strider at some point during the later battles i believe both the teams i have now have kind of just swapped to it uh because you will eventually reach a point where you kind of need the tank ability of how it has score reduction and tangle to really end up surviving because they can start hitting pretty hard like right here you could already see the kind of stats and while these stats aren't too too bad they do get even harder than that and uh, they of course keep scaling and keep going up and up and unlike some of the other events you don't get that many stats so far i've only gotten 12 hp so far when we have gotten stat drops they've been rather large but um still it's uh hasn't been enough to really keep up with uh, the lovelage of the uh, enemies as far as the rewards the reward system is a little bit different and actually pretty nice it is very deed heavy uh so we have some of the standard stuff like a really early Volky and stuff like that the Volkies mean almost nothing these days but still uh but however what does mean something is a lot of deeds as you can see here we got uh, a little bit of ritz we got a bunch of brown ones here uh then goes into imperials which are always nice but then all the way at the end uh we even got deed books so really high priority to get this event done even more so than other ones if your guild hasn't already been prioritizing doing events this one's a pretty high one just because of two uh brown uh, deed books which uh, of course uh, deed books are insanely insanely good loot uh, theoretically i believe the actual value of a deed book is technically 7,500 gems so two of them is almost like 15,000 gems as far as the equivalence of like trying to mass buy um a bunch of them like if you were to do it off your daily things where you can buy deeds and then try converting them into a deed book uh, that's pretty much how much they cost so being able to get two just at the end of this uh, thing when all you have to do is have your entire guild basically buy up to tier four and um, then use a blue orb on it because basically it costs 500 gems plus a blue orb to do the event so overall a uh, pretty good value but um yeah it's a pretty straightforward event i haven't seen any 
uh, paths that have been like really like um, choice wise. Uh, like a lot of them are like really obvious. Like oh, we'll just take whatever the highest miles are. Though we have had a couple that were a little bit closer, where it's like ah, oh, maybe we'll go for like the glory instead of a little bit of miles. And if your guild has already finished out all the rewards, you could definitely end up doing that if you so choose. Um, because once you end up having it at this point, you can just kind of go um, whatever way has the better loot. So if you see one that has like glory or even gold, though it's not that much gold. I, I feel like the glory is the best one. So the resource ones I've ended up seeing so far. Also, these stats are individual based on the player. However, your points are shared uh, guild wide so like for example um my guild already did more so now we can claim even further into the tiers but the stats that you get are uh specifically for the person and of course the leaderboard as per usual is per the person uh, so if you get really high on the leaderboard that will only benefit you and not your guild mates that would help them of course get further progress on the reward system if uh nothing else anyways that's pretty much everything with the event overall pretty straightforward just try to win in less than 10 turns and don't die Though that's kind of the intention of pretty much all those events is don't die. However, it is on a pretty tight timer. Probably more so than any other game mode we had. Like, Guild Wars is somewhat on a timer too. Though, Guild Wars timer before it starts to punish you, like, score-wise, is a lot more lenient compared to that of Journeys. Like, Journeys, you gotta go super quick. And if a given Journey doesn't really have a lot of power options or a lot of, like, quicker options, can definitely be very annoying to try to optimize your uh, scoring. So while we're kind of going over side stuff, since we just went over that, let's go over the Kingdom Pass now. So the Kingdom Pass is probably the most controversial thing that was added, though honestly, it's not as bad as it could have been. I honestly don't hate it too, too much. So I wish it was slightly cheaper, though it kind of is. So uh, the pass is $8.00. However, for whatever reason, I'm not sure if this is already fixed or if it even is intended to be fixed um, because the market cut might be a little bit different, so they might have it slightly cheaper there. But uh, on the Android version of the game, for whatever reason, it is actually $1 cheaper than literally every other version. So if you're playing on the PC mobile version and you happen to have a cross save over to the Android, um, it is worth considering just getting it there because it's $1 cheaper. So if you're going to bother getting it, might as well get it for $1 or less. So might as well. Uh, but basically, uh, we have 50 tiers here. Well, technically 55, but um, you're generally going to be getting those if you bought the bigger tier anyways. But we basically have 50 tiers here. 50 for the free side, 50 for the uh, paid side. Um, you get pretty much everything from the normal side, though, which is kind of interesting. Uh, like, you still get one copy of the pet. You still get one copy of the ultra rare. You still get one copy of the epic, though uh, at later times compared to that of the uh, paid side. Obviously, you get a little bit less loot. Uh, the main benefits of the paid side, as far as, like, unique drops, uh, do keep in mind you will be able to get all of this at a later point. Uh, most stuff from this pass will be available about three months after the fact, meaning it will probably be available around uh, late, uh, probably like early March, actually, I would say. Uh, though we don't have any official date, but like a couple months after the fact. And it ends, um, this whole pass ends on uh, mid-December. I actually forget the exact date. Whatever 35 days is from there. Well, it says right there. In 34 days, 19 hours, and 24 minutes is when it ends, or whatever time it says in your game. So you basically have 35 days to complete it. Um, you can end up getting 10 of these progress things per day. Basically, how you do these is you just quick kill explore. Uh, is the easiest way to do it. So whatever you do for gnome farming or XP farming, you just spam explore, do whatever team you currently do, which is Ruin, Quick Kill, or Dust Devil, Quick Kill. Of course, Iron Hawk was available last week, so now even more of a reason to have Iron Hawk. So if you haven't gotten to this rotation, definitely start saving some diamonds for next rotation, Iron Hawk. But um, you can get 10 of them per day. Basically, what you do is, uh, you know, just standard, if we just go to uh, something like here, I believe we already have the team set. No, we do not. Uh, however, if we just go set to any kind of standard uh, gnome grinding team, uh, every single battle they end up doing has a chance of spawning the uh, battle crasher that ends up giving it to you. Obviously, it's very unlikely we'll get it in one battle. It does have a slight diminishing return, though we did get like three in a row or something earlier. Not sure if that was lucky. But uh, basically, you just keep doing this over and over and over again. You'll uh, eventually end up getting and We've gotten seven out of the ten so far. You could do ten per day. Ends up giving you progress towards this. And basically, each one's worth about 20 gems indirectly. You don't get 20 gems from it, but it basically saves you 20 gems. I would highly advise not buying this. There are two ways to basically speed it up, both of which are not worth it. You can spend 100 gems per tier, uh, which basically saves you from having to get five of them. And you can also do it through money, which is pretty expensive. I think it's $10 for 10 tiers, uh, which literally means like $1 per tier, which is super <laughs> ridiculously pricey and uh, definitely not worth doing it uh, that way. So you could end up getting 10 progress per day. And uh, given that you have 35 days, you, that gives, uh, a, what, 10 days of leeway. So uh, you'll generally be able to just go and get it done, even if you don't do your whole 10 every single day. And from what I've seen so far, it looks like it'll take around a half an hour to an hour in order to do those 10. So kind of like how the devil was, except a little bit longer. 
um, as far as how much you're going to have to do for it per day. However, you might get some of them passively while you're already doing dailies and stuff like that. Uh, however, you're primarily going to be farming them through Explore. Anyways, as far as the rest of the rewards, uh, the ones that are currently money locked, there's not that many, surprisingly. The only things that are currently money locked, as in you will not be able to get them until probably around early March, is one of the legends. Uh, his main synergy is going to be cast on to first enemy then cast Weaver and then kill. It's going to have some really good synergy with Weaver. Uh, curious to see exactly how this one pans out. Definitely has some potential. Um, and uh, well, we won't really know for a while. Because uh, unless you're like spending a lot of resources, we're not going to be able to see that thing until about 25 days from now. Uh, when we'll finally be able to go and uh, reach that. Uh, aside from that, so basically the unique ones are him. As far as which ones are money locked. The tarot card, which isn't really anything interesting. It's just a standard tarot card. Though we don't know what this tarot card is going to be used for. Um, however, the tarot card itself is pretty much, you know, standard average tarot card kind of thing. And aside from that, um, there was one other one. A weapon over here. Uh, but those are the only ones 100% unique. Uh, I think there's a scythe yeah, right over here. This scythe. Which ends up stunning all enemies and creating some elemental stars. But those are the only uh, three. Everything else can be obtained from the free side during the duration. Uh, you end up getting a weapon over here, which is a completely different weapon than the other one. Um, you end up getting a copy of the epic. You end up getting a copy of the um, the ultra rare somewhere. I think I might have passed it. There it is. And you still end up getting a copy of the pet somewhere in all of this as well. I think it was a little bit earlier, if I'm not mistaken in all of this yeah and you still get a copy of the pet obviously it's not max like on the paid side because on the paid side you get a max version of the epic you get a max version of the ultra rare you get a max version of the pet as well as a few other resources however you still get at least a copy of it on the other side i mean you could technically eat major blue orbit or just be patient and kind of just wait until it rolls back around uh months after the fact um but yeah that's pretty much the rundown on this definitely overall not as bad as it could have been. Uh, I honestly kind of liked the setup. I just wish it was a little bit cheaper. I was kind of hoping it would be closer to the $5 mark. Though 7 or 8 is not that bad. Just make sure not to buy the um, speed up thing. Because it is super not worth it. You'd end up spending almost $60 by the end of it. If you did it the entire way. Which is extremely not worth doing. <laughs> And even if you're doing it through gems, I would not advise doing this unless you just need a few backup ones. Like, for example, let's say there's only like a few days left and you know you're not going to be able to farm and you're like sitting at like 46 and you know you want to end up hitting 50. Because even if you're on the free side, you still want to do that for the weapon. Like throwing down for like 40, 400 gems to go get that. Not that bad. Uh, obviously, though, spending like 3000 plus, not that good to do. You'd rather just spend that towards the new hero glass that's coming out this Friday. Uh, speaking of which, let's start getting into other stuff. So, as far as things that we got going on this week, uh, Tuesday we got a standard Warrens event. Main reason for this is, of course, the faction does not exist yet for this kingdom. Uh, the faction for this kingdom, as I mentioned, is coming on, I believe, December 3rd is the date. It's two Fridays from now, whatever date that is. It's the first Friday of December. Uh, Wednesday, we're going to be getting the first pet for the kingdom. Um, that's probably going to be the first pet that most people get, unless you mass bought the uh, pass. Uh, otherwise, that will probably be the first pet you get from the New Kingdom. Uh, Thursday, we got ourselves nothing. Um, and the main reason for that is Friday, we got a new class. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, this has been the case for all Kira classes. Uh, I assume it's something with how it's coded, but... Um, Whenever there is a Friday class event, there is no Thursday class event, and that seems to still be true even all the way uh, years later. Um, so we do not actually have a class event this Thursday, but we will have a new class for Friday. It's going to be an elemental hero class. It's already going to be the top five in the entire game, might even be top three. The main thing holding it back, though, is it does not have a natural mana start. However, given that it's elemental, it does have synergy with Mirage Queen. And Mirage Queen, of course, is among one of the better, if not the best, 50% mana start troop in the game. So at least it has pretty good synergy there. It's also an absolutely insane class. And just the fact that it counts as elemental uh, while also having elemental tree of the storm tree already is enough to make it pretty insane as far as how much value it has. Uh, pretty high priority to go level this thing as quickly as possible. You don't have to spend gems on it, though I likely will be just to cover for the video and everything. However, uh, when we do that on Friday... However, it is definitely pretty high priority to try to get this thing to level 70, if not 100, as quickly as you can. As it's going to be a very viable hero class that is probably going to be used a lot. Um, though it won't be used too, too much just because of the half mana start lacking on it. Um, which basically means it's going to be restricted specifically only to elemental teams. So it does have a little bit of liability like that. Almost reminds me of Sentinel hero class like that. Where it's like, it's such a good tank, but it's, it's held back by the lack of half mana start. But unlike Sentinel, it actually has a really good half mana start. So probably will have some decent viability overall. It's, it's definitely going to be among one of the better hero classes in the game. Exactly where it places, we'll need to mess around with it and kind of see. 
but uh, it is very strong. Its final trait also does like a billion stats effects, one of which is freeze and stun. So um, yeah, it's, it's going to be really insane. It's like a free stun burn something. I can't remember what the other one is. I think a tangle, which would be insane if it was. God, it just has so much value. It's in, it's absolutely insane. It'll be fun if to see if it doesn't get nerfed by then. Anyways, as far as Soul Forge, um, Weaver is finally not half discounted anymore. So um, yeah, you can no longer get a half price uh, Weaver in the uh, Soul Forge, which is kind of unfortunate. But uh, if nothing else, start saving your diamonds for um, when um, the Iron Hawk comes back around. So you can try getting double Iron Hawk because now there's even another reason to go do it since it's a really good way to quickly farm the um, the kills that you end up needing for the uh, journeys whenever they end up happening. Sorry, not the journeys. I mean the kingdom passes. Anyways, so as far as Soul Forge is concerned this week, if you do want to craft something, uh, Wild Queen, um, the main reason you'd want to get this, uh, two reasons. One is she's really good for Guild Wars and it's a Guild War week. And the other reason is she's really good for the journey event. Um, she's probably the most viable troop to have for the journey event that you can have in your arsenal and um yeah she's available in soul forge kind of coincidental uh it kind of aligns perfectly i highly advise uh getting it uh it is probably slightly higher priority to save for double iron hawk if that's still um something that you want to do however uh, if you're looking for something that's going to help you a lot on uh, this given week uh it is definitely wild queen <laughs> there is not a single thing better to craft and it's kind of funny that's actually in soul forge because it is about the most perfect week to get a Wild Queen if you do not already have one. And that's the only way you can this week. Uh, so as far as the Soul Forge, uh, the Epic Weapon is not available. Um, there's like a little deal thingy where you can get it for $10, which obviously is not a deal at all. <laughs> um, wait until it rotates back around. It should come back next time it rolls around. I'm not sure why it's not currently in the Soul Forge. Uh, that one little Epic Weapon thing. Uh, however, the only weapon that is currently here is the Thorns Blade, uh, because we're not getting the rest of them until later. Like, we're getting the Friday, another one on Friday with the class event, and we're getting one the following Friday when we have the faction and so on and so forth. However, uh, as it currently stands, we, there's technically only two weapons. Uh, one, which should be in here, is the Epic One. Currently, it's locked behind $10, so I'm pretty sure next time the event rolls around, or maybe it's even a bug that's not here, I'm not sure. Uh, you'll be able to just get it through normal resources. Uh, of course, Lauren's Blade, uh, I would not advise crafting it here. It's better just to go for Tier 3 in the uh, thing, which is like, what, 250 or so gems? They are probably going to 500 in order to get the troop uh, max as well with a blue orb. However, um, yeah, you're likely doing it through the journey event. There's really no point in crafting this weapon uh, otherwise. Uh, however, the option is here to do so. It's a pretty useless weapon. Uh, just obtained for completionist purposes and technically for Kingdom Stars. Uh, Kingdom Stars, of course, are going to be kind of hard to get on this kingdom because it has almost like nothing currently. <laughs> um, and I believe it is required for three star. Uh, you'll have a two star and uh, be locked out of it if you do not have the weapon. But you're likely just getting it from the uh, journey event. Uh, aside from that, uh, let's go over a couple teams. So as far as some teams for this week, uh, of course, uh, since there's no world event, we got to go over journey event teams. So as far as journey event, uh, there is the expensive team and the cheap team. If you're doing expensive, um, almost everything's going to be running with Bogue Strider. For the earlier battles, you can get away with Siren. However, you will eventually reach a point where they're starting to hit so hard that you're probably going to want to go for Bogue Strider. Uh, main benefit of Bogue Strider is basically a Thrall that's slightly slower than a normal Thrall. However, it has the really nice benefit of having Entangle on Skull as well as some decent score reduction. Not super high, but uh, it's a good combination for not dying. Uh, the other thing next is follow-up is Doomed uh, Glaive. Uh, this is mostly just to pressure a bunch of uh, damage. And then we have, of course, Wild Queen. Uh, Wild Queen is probably the absolute strongest thing that you can have. And luckily, it's available in Soul Forge if you do want to pick it up. Uh, it's not like a make or break if you don't have it. However, it will probably be a lot easier on you if you do. Uh, however, if you don't, uh, there is a cheaper team. Uh, you are going to have to go Truffle. Uh, Truffle, if you don't already have it, you get from Amethrax. Uh, just throw a bunch of Chaos Shards there. If you haven't already gotten it, make sure to go get it. It's just such an insanely good option. But basically, this is just trying to do an infinite loop uh, King Gob Truffle. You can't really infinite loop it, though, with this kind of composition, though. Uh, based on the restrictions, it's just not possible to. However, um, main premise, of course, is just try to rush this mana up and try to get as many casts as you can, as quickly as you can, and just kind of do some damage that way. As long as you don't lose your turn, or, you know, like, the state of it being your turn, you're still not going to end up losing uh, points off the event. So 
while it's still end up working out pretty well. Um, definitely not as good as the Wild Queen build, but it's relatively cheap, only using a common, something that you're getting from the event, and something that you can immediately throw Chaos Shards on in order to target. And even though it's a legend, it's something that you can easily target just by throwing a couple hundred Chaos Shards, and you're probably good to go. And you probably already have it, since because it's just a, such a ridiculously good option. If you don't, definitely make sure to do so, because there's so many other instances where you use it, aside from this current event week. Uh, aside from that, as far as the Tuesday faction, a little bit weird since it's not the actual faction of the place. Uh, we're having it for the Warrens, uh, which doesn't really make much sense, but obviously there's currently not one that they can set to it since it doesn't come out until next week's Friday. So they end up just doing the Warrens. We're probably going to have a weird one next Tuesday as well. Uh, however, uh, Warrens, you can kind of just finesse cheese it down and be good to go. As far as uh, Peer Faction is concerned, uh, you basically spam Luna. Generally, Luna with a uh, Bunny Corn. You could go for Luna if you really want to. Main reason for the Bunny Corn is it ends up creating some yellow. Also, 75% mana start. This synergizes with the fact that you get to explode a bunch of uh, random gems when uh, taking yellow gems. And obviously, that has some synergy with the Bunny Corn. And the Bunny Corn helps you just cover brown. You can also go for Luna if you want, depending on how you want to go about it. Uh, assuming you have potion effects for Luna is definitely a little bit better. Uh, however, if you're running it without potions, um, you would uh, generally run it this way. And even if you're running it with potions, you can still run it that way. Anyways, as far as the uh, Elementalist, uh, that's the name of the hero class that's coming out this Friday, uh, you would end up doing Dawnbringer with a bunch of Shaylee. Uh, she is insanely good. Actually, did we even show her yet? Yeah, I'll go show her because we didn't show the team. Oh, yeah, we're about to hit it um, because, of course, uh, the two achievements that haven't been doable for quite some time now, uh, they are doable now. The one where you have to get 20,000 miles, though I think you do have to buy a little bit further than Tier 4. I'm not sure yet, but you might have to buy further than Tier 4 to get those 20,000 miles, though. I'm not really concerned about getting that this particular week, though if you are to get that achievement, um, you might need to go further than Tier 4. I am not 100% certain on that right now, so do be wary of that. So you might want to go all the way to tier 6 and not use a blue orb potentially, though it's buying pretty deep. That's like 1,350 gems or something. Um, but I, I'm not 100% confident yet if tier 4 actually is enough to get it done. So do be aware of that if you do want that achievement this week. Anyways, uh, the other achievement, of course, is matching, I think, 100 elemental stars. And she's really good at doing that. Um, but yeah, this is basically all you'd have to do for the event. Just basically spam, spam Dawnbringer until you win. <laughs> or any other similar weapon that uh, she can end up uh, farming um, EXP into. Uh, which is technically any of them because she kind of farms all EXP because of the X destroy. And as far as uh, elemental stars, this is the one that I wanted to kind of go over. So uh, as far as farming this, uh, you can kind of do it wherever. I guess Golvania is kind of a decent option here. So if I go over to uh, Golvania and we end up bringing this team. So this is a Nexus portal, which uh, you get off the event key drop table. The King Gob Truffle, which hopefully you already have laying around, and definitely make sure to go get if you don't already. Uh, plus, you're going to need it for this event next week, because that's the cheapest possible viable option that you could possibly do the Journey event with. Like, there's anything cheaper that you could possibly win with uh, once it starts hitting the harder one, so you're going to kind of have to have Truffle if you don't already have Truffle already. So make sure to go do those daily factions and go get the Shards to go get a Truffle if you don't already have them laying around uh, from Amethrax. And uh, as far as Shaylee, um, she... Well, I'll go show it. So uh, as far as this team, obviously the whole point of this team is uh, not to be a good team, but to simply farm up um, the stars to uh, get the achievement as uh, quickly as you can. So uh, basically Nexus, uh, the new legend, uh, has a elemental storm, which is kind of interesting. This storm ends up making elemental stars fall from the sky at a higher rate. So uh, this ends up triggering whenever we end up getting extra turn. Unfortunately, no extra turns. Ends up creating four to six elemental stars. And uh, we haven't actually seen this yet, this video. And nor will we, because they all just got matched. <laughs> but uh, basically, what an elemental star does is it counts as a blue, red, green, and brown, as we mentioned. And uh, when it gets uh, matched, it'll end up destroying an X shape. So right here, uh, we'll end up getting all the mana accumulation for everything in an X. Kind of like a Dragonian Monk. And as you can see, we could end up just doing it for extra turns. You want to be paying attention to where all the brown... Uh, oh, do keep in mind, you cannot replace skulls. Uh, this keeps throwing me off like crazy. But you cannot replace skulls with them. Um, so if I click on this, you can see we can't click on the skull. However, we can do that and get the blue synergy right there. So you basically just have to really pay attention to what is on the board and just try to see if you can keep getting extra turn uh, synergies. And when you don't, you kind of just do a truffle or you do the other thing and uh, double check again. Do you have synergy? And if you don't, well, then you just keep casting things that uh, kind of just reset the board. And you basically just keep doing this until you have all the elemental stars or until you end up winning. And you'll likely win before you end up getting all the achievement. But that's basically the whole premise here. And you just basically keep doing this until you have as many elemental stars as you want. Or until the battle is won. Uh, whichever one happens to happen uh, first. Uh, this is a really strong troop. Honestly, this might be the strongest thing that this faction might ever e end up getting. It is actually pretty insane. 
It's uh, basically Azurus if Azurus wasn't useless. Um, it's basically a viable Azurus is the easiest way to look at her. Uh, it's this four higher mana cost than Azurus, though the amount of extra mana accumulation that you're getting is absolutely insane compared to Azurus, which does absolutely no mana accumulation due to just the nature of the fact that it's doing skulls. And of course, skulls do not give uh, mana. Uh, well, technically doom skulls and uber doom skulls do, but you know what I mean. Generally, a skull does not give you mana. At least not like an extra destroy. Uh, plus that thing itself actually gives us plus one to red, green, blue, and brown. Um, so we're actually still getting mana from it on top of the fact that it's doing an extra destroy. So overall, pretty nice. Um, but yeah, you just keep doing this, get as many elemental stars as you want, and uh, just basically gets you cheap end time. And you'd probably be able to get it done just a few battles of messing around with this. It definitely wouldn't take that long at all. But we'll just go and end it out here by taking out the truffle. And I just got it in the corner right there. Oh no, you guys might not be able to see it though. But the achievement literally just popped up in the corner. <laughs> no, I don't think I have the overlay on so you guys can't see it. I do when I have the stream. But I think for this video recording, it didn't come through. But I, I literally just got it there. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. But uh, yeah, pretty easy. You, you think it takes like three or four battles, not even. It depends how many you do in a single battle. Theoretically, if you could do it in one battle, if you just try not to attack as much, obviously. Um, but anyways, if you guys still have any other questions, feel free to leave in the comment section below. Though I'm probably going to be sleeping because between the stream uh, that we just did and uh, this now, um, I am about to crash. So uh, you might want to go and reference the th couple hour stream that we did earlier. Um, and I'll try to get to questions later. And of course, later tonight, we will be uh, doing a stream at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, as we do every single night. And we'll kind of just be recapping everything and uh, farming the last little bit of those, which we'll need to be doing daily now. There's a little bit of a grind, unfortunately, how much you'll kind of have to focus on this daily, uh, because that's like, like a minimum extra half an hour they have to throw down every single day, which could be a little annoying, though you only have to do it 25 out of the 30 days or kind of do some kind of partial thing. Um, so it might not be as as bad, but definitely a little bit more of a grind, but at least some decent loot coming in with it But anyways guys any other questions definitely feel free to leave it in the comment section below as per usual All the teams shown in this video will also be in description below if you want to go and uh, Copy paste it, any of them for uh, using throughout the week. Anyways guys any other questions comment below uh, Feel free to leave a like on the video helps out a lot and is greatly appreciated as always and I will catch you guys soon Best of luck in version 6.0 with the new kingdom and the new journey event. Goodbye everyone and thanks for watching